Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. I'm out mushroom hunting with my buddy Juniper, and I thought I'd bring you along. We're looking for bowl eat mushrooms today. Okay, now on our property, we have about 25 acres of forest. This is an old sled dog trail that we can go down to get through the woods in our property. There's a couple of sled dog trails on our property. You can probably hear the baby goats in the background. Now what I'm looking for are mushrooms that are growing in the dirt, not on dead trees. Bolites have very specific and unique characteristics which keeps us safe from picking mushrooms that are maybe gonna make us sick. Now this is a bright orange mushroom and that's not one we're gonna eat. It's actually called a fly agaric mushroom and underneath it has gills. Now a bolete mushroom has no gills. There's juniper and you can see this fly agaric mushroom, same as we just saw. It has little white spots on it, but if you look underneath, it's really hard to determine whether it has gills or not. Um, but because it's bright orange, we're not gonna eat it. That's pretty common sense, I think. Now I'm trying to find a clearing because that's, well, the easiest place to find mushrooms. There's lots of mushrooms that grow in Alaska, and I know a fair amount about the different kinds of mushrooms that grow in Alaska but there are very few mushrooms other than a bolete that I will pick and eat. Like I said, a bolete has very unique characteristics. The first thing to do is look, is there gills underneath? If there's gills, don't eat it. Done. If you live in Alaska, boletes grow where the low bush cranberries grow and where the blueberries grow in that super small low to the ground acidic soil where the moss grows. Now this is a bowly. It looks like a flapjack or a pancake over a bowl. See, it's got a sponge underneath. Here's a couple more. I'll give you some more examples. Okay, this one's a little odd shaped, but that's okay. He's probably a little older than the rest. This is a nice one too. See, sponge underneath. Oh, there was one back there, I saw it. Did you see it? Here is a tiny new one. It's really rounded at the top. And look how beautiful that sponge is. All right, now this mushroom trip was a little impromptu and uh, kind of running out of room to hold on to the mushrooms. I don't have a basket, I didn't bring a bag. So let's get this mushroom, look, sponge underneath. They usually have a white stock. Looks like a pancake on top, maybe a little pitted pancake, but that's okay. My pal's getting pretty big now. The sun is still out, so I am definitely not ready to stop yet. I see more mushrooms out there. So uh, I took off my undershirt and that is my mushroom bag. <laughs> you can see they all look the same. All boletes have sponge underneath and not gills. If I happen to pick the wrong bolete, I'm not gonna die. I'm just gonna get a stomach ache. In order to avoid a stomach ache, I follow these rules. It needs to look like a pancake on the top. It needs to have a sponge underneath. It needs to have a white stock. And the sponge can be white, off-white, or yellow. And that is not an issue. The yellowness of the sponge is not an issue. It just tells me how old the mushroom is. And when I open it up, it's probably gonna have bugs in it. In just a moment, I'll show you what it looks like. The ones that are too old for me to eat. Sorry, the camera lens is dirty. There's also one more rule. And that is if you cut the mushroom or break it off or whatever, and it turns blue, like seriously, it's blue like Smurf blue. That's not good. <laughs> Now this is an older bowl eat mushroom. You can see how big it is. The underside of the sponge is really dark and we don't want to eat that, but it's where the spores live. So I'm going to break it up and throw it around the forest floor for next year's mushroom season. All right, looks like we're getting pretty full up of mushrooms. I got a full hand. My shirt over there is all full. I think we might be maxed out. Along the driveway, I left a little stash before I figured out how to use my shirt as a bag. We used to go to Reeves' parents' cabin way out in the middle of nowhere, and every August we would bring home about 30 pounds of mushrooms to dehydrate, but now we have property where we can harvest our own mushrooms. Oh, 
Okay, here we are with our mushrooms. I wanted to show you how we process them. Normally, if I was thinking ahead and wasn't just overzealous about finding the mushrooms and pull them out of the ground, I'd have had a knife with me and I cut the bottom off and leave this dirt part in the ground. I'll leave the roots in the ground so a new fruit body can grow. I'll take the cap off. If the stem is still white on the inside, I might peel the edges off a little bit, or if they're all dirty, I might cut them off. And then chop it up. Put it in my pile. The cap, you're gonna slice into quarter inch slices. Okay, and then see how this sponge looks really ugly? I'll get you a close up. Okay, this is the sponge. So the mushroom sat like this. Here's his little orange flapjack top. This is the sponge. If the sponge doesn't look good, I get rid of it and just save the cap. Most people don't save the sponge, but if the sponge looks really good, I will save it. But anyways, cut the stem off. Chop it up if you want to keep it. If you don't want to keep it, get rid of it and slice up the cap, get rid of the sponge. And then I'm gonna dehydrate it in my dehydrator till they're dry. And then I'm gonna stick it in the freezer in a jar um, or a container. And anytime I need mushrooms, I'll just take it out, stick it in the food. Sorry about the goats, it is goat feeding time and they are real mad. This cap looks very nice though. It's really dense and hard. The bigger they get, the softer they get, and the more infested the bugs may be. So, like this, I'm going to keep that sponge. It's beautiful. Okay, let me find you a bigger one. I'll cut it up and show you what it looks like, and then I'll let you go. Let's see. So, this one's all yellow on the underside. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just old, and there's probably lots of bugs in there. You can see how the stem just, like, crumbles apart because so there's been so many bugs just ran up through the middle. So I'm not saving that one. That one's pretty yucky. And actually, I don't know that I'm gonna save this. The cap is, the cap is okay, but it's starting to get brown on the top instead of being a nice, beautiful white. And this sponge is yucky. So let's throw that somewhere where we want mushrooms to grow because those spores will make mushroom babies. I forgot to tell you. Turn your fingers black. I remember now, it's gonna be like that for a couple of days. As always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. If you like us a little bit, like the video. If you wanna help us out, you can share a video or subscribe, make comments below. I answer all the comments back. I hope you enjoyed our mushroom video today. Stay tuned for lots more videos about homesteading in Alaska. Okay, here's our finished product. After we dehydrated it, you can see some of them turned black and some of them stayed white. Black ones are just regular variety bolletes, and the ones that stay white are called king boletus. They're the ones with the really fat stalks, like the Smurf Mushroom House.